of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Because yeah. all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so. sacred to me. It truly is all that matters. I was on a work trip when the culinary embolism happened.
fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good. In the goodness of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness to each and every one of us, Father God. I pray that each and every one of you recognize the goodness of our God. Hallelujah. Oh, he's been good. If you look back over your life, you know that God has been good. Oh, we thank you, dear Lord, that we ask right now, Father God, that you would step me aside, Father God. Hallelujah, and come forth, Lord Jesus. Come forth and speak to your people, Lord Jesus. Speak to me, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor for your goodness, Lord. And I thank you. Let your people receive this word that you have had me to prepare. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Oh, I thank you for your goodness. Oh, I thank you, dear Lord, for your goodness. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for his goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. Good morning, everyone. I am going to attempt to, uh, my book is the book of Numbers, and this is my summary for the year of this book. This book was written uh, 1405 BC. It has 36 chapters. It has 36 chapters, and Moses is the author of this book. This book, it gives us hope. Hallelujah. In these 36 chapters, it's divided into three parts. The chapters 1 through 10 is when the Israelites were leaving Sinai. Chapters 11 and 21 is when they were journeying through the uh, wilderness. And chapters 22 and 36 is when they were preparing to enter the promised land. Before I get started, I want to say this. When God rescued us and his goodness, and he began to take us through our journey, the first thing that I want you to remember, we must learn to trust him and believe in him as he lead us through anything that we face in this journey. And see the goodness of God. The book of Numbers was written to demonstrate that God's covenant plan stays on track even when the people don't. His, it was his purpose in the beginning of this book. This book got its name when God ordered a counted of people called the census. But listen, it all boils down to the disobedience of the Israelites not having faith in God and failing in their commitment to him, which caused them to be kept out of the promised land. You see, God is a God of order, decent and in it's the same for us also because we we fail God when we don't hold up to our commitments to him also God tells us everything we need to know and he tells us everything that we need to do and plus he shows us he shows us on a day to day we all know what to do, but we fall short in some area. We know what to do, but we fall short. We fall short in that. Our commitment to God is our witness. We need to show others how important God is to us. God makes it so simple that we miss it too, just like the Israelite did. During this year, 2023, God allowed me to come forth with four lessons. And I am going to shortly go over 
those lessons, just, you know, bringing out little pinpoints of the lesson that was taught through this um, summary that I'm doing today. My first lesson led me to chapter 14 in Numbers, Numbers 14, verses 2 and 4. You can read them at your time, Numbers 14, chapter, uh, chapter 14, verses 2 to 4. And the title of that lesson was, So Simple That We Miss It. The Israelites had a task before them, but the task was so simple that they missed it. We, too, have a task before us. It's been a task for so many years. Where the world is right now, and we all know where the world is right now. This moment, some people miss it, and they still don't get it, that God is here. He, he's showing us each and every day, but so many are still missing it. We can miss everything God has for us while we're deep in complaining, like the Israelites are doing, grumbling, and we do this. And there's no one in here don't say that they don't complain sometimes, they don't grumble, but we do this. And then our heart is not in the right place when we're doing this. And most of us, it'll begin to lead us to sin. Numbers chapter 11, verses 1, tells us how the Israelites began to complain about their hardship. And see, while they were doing all of this complaining, the Lord heard them. He was hearing everything that they were saying. And his anger blazed against them, and he sent fire to rage upon them, and he destroyed some of the people that was in the camp. Is this not, we don't want God to do this to us. I tried, and when I was doing this lesson, I was back home when I was visiting my daughter, and I was working with my lesson and trying to do what I needed to do there. But as I was preparing this lesson, I said, you know what, I've got to stop this. I find myself, I'm guilty. I find myself complaining about anything, my health, or anything. I just start, but lately I have trying, I'm trying, I have to stop myself. I said, thank you, God. God, stop me. Just stop me in my track from complaining. So I try to stop complaining so much because when I sit back in your, you ever sit back in your home and just look back and just, Thank you, God. Thank you. Just see God's goodness, where, where he's brought you from. You think about your life coming up. You look back and just say, you know, God, you really have been so good to me. And he's been good to me. He's been good to my family. But, you know, God doesn't like it when we complain. He, he gets a little angry when we complain. And he wants us to come to him. When something isn't right, instead of going to sister so-and-so, or brother so-and-so, or going to everybody else instead of coming to him. He wants us to come to him. Come to him first. He wants us to talk to him about it. But as we go to him, he wants us to trust and believe in him. You know, complaining is toxic. When we grumble, especially and whine, especially against the word of God, we would totally miss everything that God has for us and that what God is trying to do for us. How many of us have found ourselves doing that complaining uh, so much to the point that one, nothing happened, or two, the situation that you were complaining about went a different direction, or third, the situation even got, just got worse. What, what are our complaining do? If we just go to God first, what was happening to the Israelites, they were refusing what God had promised them and not believing him at his word. How simple we easily can get refusing God at his word. Just like the title, so simple we can miss it. The second time that the Lord had me to come before you was uh, my second lesson I talked about faith. Faith is a gift of God. In that lesson, we talked about walking in faith, hearing, having faith, complete faith, lack of faith, building our faith, losing our faith, and the most important, living without faith. 
And we, we went through each and every one of those and talked about those. When it came to the Israelite faith, they failed many times with God. God showed his own faithfulness by constantly being present among them and leading the way for them. Through their journey, we knew, you know how he did it. Remember, he guided them through a cloud by day and by a pillar by a fire by night. That's all God wants us to do, to have faith, and he'll guide us to wherever we need to go, whatever we need to do. Because God is always here. When God moves, we should move. When God stops, we should stop. Do you see uh, what God wants us to learn from this? He's given us the answer in everything. He's given us the blueprint. The blueprint is the Bible. That's where we will find the answer to everything that we need. Stay in his word, learn of him, and draw closer to him. Stand in his word. Remember the scripture, I think that is six, uh, Matthew 6, 33, I think. Seek and ye shall find. That's if we are still reading our word and searching our Bible every day because when you're in that Bible each and every day, that's where your strength comes from. I don't know about you, but that's where mine comes from. When I stay in the Word, stay listening to gospel songs, stay listening to minister, listening to the Word, or be careful who you listen to. Make sure they line up with your Bible. Praise God. Now, it was only three days into the Israelite journey, and these people were already complaining. Three days, and they were already complaining. This is how quickly they forgot about what God has done for them and what God was doing for them. You see, people, we got to see the goodness of God. We got to see his goodness. Haven't you experienced his goodness in your life? Haven't you realized how good God is to you? He's good. I realize God is good to me. I, there are times I have slack in my reading, slack and doing, I'll turn that television on. But lately, I thank God, I have the TV be on, but I'm really not watching it. I'm in my word, or I'm listening to the word, you know what I'm saying? So we got to realize how good God gives to us. Do we recognize it's God that brings us out the impossible? When something comes up that's just impossible, you know that you can't fix, a man can't fix, but God fix. Do we realize how, how good God is? That's the goodness of God. Every morning when we wake up, we need to get on our knees and thank God. It's the same thing at night when we go to bed. Before we lay our head down, we need to say thank you, God. Because he brought us to another day. We need to thank you. And even during the day, those of that work, those that don't work, any of them, we need to stop, worship God. Even just, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. We need to stop and give God praise. All during the day, give God praise. Thank you. In other words, thank you every chance we get. I, I wrote down here, give a little testimony. Uh, when I was back home, you know, I just came back from Texas uh, visiting my daughter. And while she was in the hospital several times back and forth, I'm keeping her older two boys, which is six and 11. And I, I, I noticed something good about them, how uh, my daughter and her husband are training the kids. They, they are getting them to know God and to know the goodness of God. Because you know back, I'm going to take us back when we were kids and we always want to do something good because the teacher see us. We want, we want to do something good or our parents, we want to always do something good. But when the parents or the teacher walk away, we, we doing something else, but in front of them, we want to do something good. Well, my, my grandkids, I, I, I noticed um, how well their parents were never because when my daughter was in the hospital, her, of course, her husband went and, and, and stayed with her at the hospital, so I was there with the kids. And so, every morning we get up, and, and I walk in the room, and I look, and I say, okay, guys, because she homeschools them. And when they get up, the first thing they do is kneel down and start praying. And, and, and I look at that, and I come back in the room with people again, and they're still down there praying. 
Jeez, God, they talking to God. I mean, they, they, they really talking to God. And then at night, the family have a uh, prayer at night because they say, come on, grandma, we're going to have prayer. And sometimes I'll have prayer by myself with me. My husband and I, we communicate and pray, still pray together, even though we are, you know, far apart. But they have Bible study, they have prayer, even if it's an hour long, or two hours long, or 30 minutes long, or 10 minutes long, they have prayer every night. So when they were gone is what I'm trying to bring up. So when she was in the hospital and he was with her, um, the kids continued to do what they were doing. Even when I was cooking for them, I would give the little one, the, the bread, which is six, his plate. And before I could look and say, don't forget to bless your food, he was already, I said, I'm sorry. He was already blessing his food, giving God thanks. And they didn't, they don't do it to please their parents. They are talking to God. And I like that in them because they are committed into praising God. And they don't do it just, just because mom and dad are there or grandma is there. They were praising and talking to God. So I just wanted to give that testimony that that the goodness of God, that they're showing them how good God is. And then one funny thing that the loved one, he wanted to run upstairs and get something. But then again, he was afraid to run upstairs and his so older brother looked at me and said, Rick, why are you afraid? God is with you. I looked at him and said, thank you, Jesus. And then the little brother went on, my little six-year-old went on up and got ready for and came on back down. The goodness of God. I just thank God for that. Praise God. But getting back to our, our lesson, we need to see God's goodness in our lives on a daily basis and thank him for it. And I like it that these kids were thanking God for it. Or whatever they were thanking God for, they was on their knees and they were thanking God. Because we can quickly forget what God has done for us and still doing for us. We can slack in giving God praise. You know, we can do that. And I'm not just talking about the world. I'm talking about the Christian. They're in the church. We can slack in giving God praise. There's a scripture I want to read with you that reminds us not to forget what God has done for you. That's Psalms 103, verses 2 to 5. Psalms 103, verses 2 to 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You see, I want to stop right there. We can't forget all the good things that God has done for us and still do we can't do that. We can't forget when God do something for us. We can't forget that we got to thank God, praise Him. Verse three says, "Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy deceit? How many times has God healed me? I can't even count the time God has healed me and is still healing me. I thank God. Verse four: Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy? God keep us from all harm daily. We see what's happened in the world today. God protects us. He's covered us. Why? Because he loves us. And that's the goodness of God. Do you see his goodness? Do you see his goodness? Because when we go out in this world, there's no guarantee that we'll make it back to the house. There's so many people that have left their house and did not make it back home. Praise God. We must see the goodness of God towards us. And I'm going to go back to uh, Numbers 14, but I'm going to go to verse 18 where it says, The Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. But that doesn't mean he excuses the one that do wrong. He is a good God. Oh yes, he's a good God. And we must see the goodness of God. Because he's with us and he loves us. This is what this book of Numbers shows us about God. He is a God who chooses to live close to his people. He lives close to us. He loves us. He's with us every day. Wherever we go, he's there with us. And we have to live with genuine faith. Honor God with praise. Honor him every day. See his goodness in your life and constantly 
We thank him for it. Believe and trust in him always and pray daily. Communicate with him. Listen to him. Do things for him to show your appreciation of his goodness towards you. Amen. And let us all be committed. I know I said that, you know, I may not go here, but you know, if the Lord leads me to go here, I'm going here. Let us be committed. I know sometimes it's a tug of war to try to get here at 8, 8.15, 8.20, 8.30. It's a tug of war to get here. But God, look what he's done. He's blessed us with a beautiful building. And we got so many chairs now, and there are three people here. There are three people. We got room for so many people. I want to talk about three people. There's a testimony here. I want to talk about just so many. It, it's not getting off my lesson. It's still on my lesson. I want to talk about three people just real short. And there's more to talk about, but with the, with our time frame, I'm just going to do three. Talking about being committed. And I, you guys have heard me several times tell you how committed my husband is. There are times as a wife in the flesh, I want to get mad. Baby, you ain't got to get there on time. You don't have to be the first one there. But he does because he's not doing it for me. He's not doing it for you. He's doing it for God. And I thank God for his commitment. And another person that I want to talk about, uh, before I go to these last two people, uh, uh, the enemy, we got to be careful because the, the enemy, which is the thief, he, he, his purpose is to come, steal, kill, and destroy us. And, you know, he, the first thing that he wants to destroy is the Christian. Yes, oh yeah, he wants to destroy this Christian because they're the ones that are out here witness. He ain't worried about all them people out in the world because they're following him. He's coming for the Christian. And the enemy wants us to be busy. He wants us to sleep in. He wants us to come later. Oh, such and such can do that. Oh, they can do that. They're there. Oh, they're, going, they're, they're faithful. They're committed. They're going to be there. No. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He don't want you to be here. He wants you to sleep in, stay awake, come in, drag in late whenever you want to. No. Let's, let's, let, let's call the devil a liar and be here on Sunday morning. Because if we have our job and your job tells you to be there at 5 o'clock, you're going to be there at 5 o'clock. If the job tells you to be there at 7 o'clock, you're going to be there at 7 o'clock. So God wants us here and he'll bless us for the building and we need to fill this building where we got people standing outside the door trying to get in. Back when you know, I know, but I thank you God. But the next person I want to talk about is Elder Stubblefield for his faithfulness. We all know what, I broke something here, but I'm, I'm going to say what's on my heart. We all know what he has to go through. He has to take care of his, his wife. He has to take care of himself. He has to take care of his mother. He has, to, he has a job to do because he still has income coming in. So he has to work. And he has all these seminars and stuff that are going on because he has to make money. He still has to protect his family. But he still is faithful to God. We know last week God used him to bring forth a powerful word. And he even told you himself up here that he did all this seminars and he did that, then he did that, and he did that, and then he had to come here and preach. He had a lot on his plate, but he was committed to God. He came and he brought forth that word. Praise God. The third person I want to talk about is Sister Brooks. We all know how she has struggled through the year and how she's won her heart is big. How she's want to do this and want to do that, but she never had the means to do it. Look how God has flourished her because you wouldn't know that she was going through all this unless she get up here and mention it and tell you about it because she was still committed. She still came to church. She still praised God. Look how she's flourishing. Those are three people I wanted to talk about. Like I said, there's many more. But we need to learn from these people. We have to be committed. God is supposed to be first in your life. God is supposed to be first in your life. I'm going to say it one more time. God is supposed to be first in your life. We, you remember when Pastor Hackett was here? We don't cut nothing down. When, 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 
when I say don't cut nothing down, we don't cut off anything just because you want to cut it off. You don't have time to do it. If you can't do it, you get somebody else to do it. We don't cut off anything. You know how Pastor, she wanted us to stay together, be committed, keep church going. Don't stop nothing. Praise God, that wasn't in my note. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let us be committed, people. Let us be committed. We can find ourselves so many times making excuses, complaining or whatever, but know that every time we complain, it separates us from God. It separates us from God when we complain. Listen, I want to say this to you. Anytime that any of us, I'm, I'm calling myself, I'm not just talking to you and you on Zoom, I'm talking to myself too. Anytime we feel like complaining, just stop it. Stop it. Ask God to help you stop it. That's what I mean. God, help me. Stop me from complaining. Stop it. And start thanking God for what he has done and continue to do for you. Keep the faith and trust God's plan. Because if, God, if you praise him, God has a plan for you. Follow him. My third lesson that I was able to come before you was coming from Numbers, the fifth chapter, the first to the fifth verse. That's number five, first to the fifth verse. And my title was, Walking in Purity Before God. We talked about removing of uncleanness from around us. I went over the instruction the Lord had given Moses of what to do, plus the instruction and demands of when one person does wrong to another one. I brought the question before the church. Are you walking in purity before God? I shared three things what purity should define for us. The three things were our thoughts in life, our word, and our action. I gave the scripture Matthew 5th chapter and the 8th verse, and where it says, Bless other people in heart, for they shall see God. You see, purity is very, very important to God because purity is pure being holy. None of us can walk any way before, I, in my notes it said, none of us can walk any old way before God. And we can't do that, no way. We can't hear God's voice directly and, and we won't experience his presence among us if our heart is completely, it is clouded, clouded with impurities. It's important that we walk in purity before the Lord. That was my third lesson. And my last lesson that I came before you uh, came out of Numbers chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. And the title was, Where is the light that's shining in you? Where is the light that's supposed to shine? And from these verses 1 through 4, the Lord spoke to Moses about the lighting of the lamp and to tell his brother Aaron what to do. He was instructed to set the seven lamps in the lampstand so their light would shine forward in front of the lampstand. See, this was to shed light in the holy place, which was representing the light and light that God gives to his people. I share the scripture, John 15, verses 5, where God said, this is God's word, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. We are the branches, church. And God has set us up in position to shine forward and bright. There's no room for any of us to let our light go dim. God is so near. And I know everyone sees the sign. Some see the sign, but they're ignoring the sign. The signs are there. We need to seriously let our light shine for others. So I ask the question again. Where is the light that shines in you? 
that God has grace upon you. Numbers chapter 6, verses 25. 6, verse 25. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. God will shine his face upon us and he will give us life and he will show us mercy and kindness. That's the goodness of God. It's very important that people, your family, your co-workers, your friends, see the light in you, the true light of it, the true light in you, shining always. We covered so much in this lesson also, but it all boils down to where is that light that shines in you? Is your light visible? We also discussed being that light and being in that light. There's a difference in those two. We discussed the scenario of the light bulb. I asked the question, what watts are you? We went down all that. And we know everybody in here want to be the highest watts of the air. I want to share, read something in your hearing that I ran upon. And uh, the title was a little strange for me, but not too strange. It says, this hit home for me. It says, when a flashlight grows dim or quit working, what do most of you do? Do you throw it away? No. You know, of course not. You change the batteries of it. When a person, someone you know or someone you don't know, messes up or finds themselves in a dark place, what do you do? Do you pass them aside or forget them? I ain't got time for them. Of course not. You want to help them, pray for them, and you want to help them change their batteries. You know, there are some people that need double A batteries, which is attention and affection. And then there's someone in your life that may, like, that may need triple A batteries, which is attention, affection, and acceptance. And then you might have some that may need a C battery, which is compassion. And I think we all need that one. And there are some that need a D battery, which is direction. And if all of those batteries don't seem to work, and they don't seem to shine for that person, what do you do? You simply sit down with them quickly and let your light shine for them. I know this is short, but I hope and pray that someone got something out of this, that you can see the goodness of God. So in my closing, I would say that the book of Numbers is probably a book I would not have read as much as other books. I'm just being honest with you. But I am so, so, so glad that God chose this book for me. Even though it was 36 chapters, it was all good, jumping back and forth and then trying to read the whole book. But in the one lesson that God allowed me to uh, bring forth, I learned how this book re uh, revealed God to me more than ever, because I find myself just sitting, I'll be studying and I'll just stop and just start think, thinking about the goodness of God and start thinking about, oh God, you brought me out of that. Oh God, I didn't, man, I didn't know how I got it. Oh God, that did happen to me. You brought me through all of that. You sit and you start thinking about all the goodness of God, what he brought me through. I saw enough to see his goodness in my life. The Israelites here, they tested God's patience, and in turn, he tested their endurance and their faithfulness. He led the way all the time, and he, his presence was forever with them. All that God was doing and showing them, it was so simple that they missed it. I would say this to everyone. If you're complaining when things are not going uh, your way or complaining about anything, you should read this book. I, I encourage you to read, read the book of Numbers because you're going to find out that God doesn't ever give up on us. When we are at our worst, oh sure, he'll knock us down a couple places, but he will definitely stick with us. He'll be there for us. And through the roughest time, God will be there for us. 
How many can testify to that? God will be there for you. He will definitely be there. This book also had me to think about Job at a time. And when you can to think about it, uh, that we need to be like Job and not let our faith crumble. I've been there. Don't let your faith crumble. No matter what comes up upon you, we must see God and see his goodness in our life. And simplify living and walking in faith. Stop complaining so much and grumbling about things that God already made a pathway for us. Keep our focus on God. That's when things come up and forth. Keep your focus on God. Keep your focus on God. Okay. Uh, this not in my note, uh, but just like this morning, everything is trying to come up. I'm we're, we're, we're support my brother because he teaches Sunday school. I record him. And I'm recording him, and we're trying to make it here. We get here. There's no batteries for the microphone. So I need to be looking over my lesson, so I thought. And but my husband sends me down to the grocery store because he's out to store prayer, and I think he had problems with the with Zoom as I was gone. And I'm gone. And the first thing that he didn't want to do, I'm mad at my husband. I'm mad, I'm mad, but I had to keep my focus on God. Because as I was driving, then I get down to the Safeway, there's ice on the ground. I saw this man walking and he went, he slipped. I oh no, I don't have part to here, but I need to hold my hand, you know? So I walk slowly and I'm still fired up, I'm still mad, but that's where the enemy wanted me to go. And he wanted me to get my focus off God, but I did not get my focus off God, I kept my focus on God. I said, I got to bring forth this man. So I text my brother, I said, pray for me, because I'm mad with your brother-in-law right now. But I had to keep my focus. That wasn't on my lesson, you know, because it just happened. But you have to keep your focus no matter what comes up. Keep your focus on God. Let me see where I'm at on my lesson now. But keep your focus on God, which is the life, and have faith. It's a gift from God. This book taught me to really see God's love for his people in both discipline and in blessing. As long as we walk in purity before him, remove all the uncleanness from around us, and stay pure and holy before God. And remember, as I said earlier, it's very important. Purity is very important to God. This light that shines in us is to shine always, not sometimes. It needs to shine always. It should never stop shining. We need to shine for others that are in the darkness, trying to come to the light. So if we fall, that makes them fall. So we want to keep it up. Keep your light shining. That's being there for one another. Let your light shine. John 1 and verse 7. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, which is his son, cleanses us from all sin. The last thing. We, greater light, or anyone else that are missing, as believers, must walk in accordance with God's word. We must do that. Always. Don't slip up in doing what the world is doing and jump back into church on Sunday morning and think everything is okay. It's not. And I know many of may not see, but God sees everything. Psalms 119 verses 1 says, Blessed are those who walk in the law of the Lord, who walk in God's word. When we do this, we will have a deeper fellowship with God and with each other. Remember to see the goodness of God and be committed to him. I repeat, we can't walk any kind of way before God. We must see God for who he really is. See his goodness. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Colossians 1 and 10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. 
And also in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 12 says, Walk in a life pleasing to God. We have to see God and see his goodness. And we must be committed to him always. When you are, when I said I wasn't going to say this, but my husband, I showed it to him this morning. We got a He said, oh no, you need to say that. When you were given the Holy Spirit, it was a seal. A seal for his goodness, God's goodness. Just like you send off your mail, and you know when you send your mail off, you're going to seal it up good, make sure it's sealed, and it's completely sealed, and you're going to send it off, right? But the Holy Spirit is a seal. It's a seal of guaranteed deliverance. So we got the people see the goodness of God. Be committed to Him always. Not just sometimes when you want to pat on the back. Be committed to Him all the time when nobody else is looking but God. That's when we need to please God. Don't love Him because of what He always does for you. Love Him for who He is and see His goodness. See God's goodness, His goodness, and be committed. Praise God. Amen. Give our hands for the word this morning.